I've done most of the things I need to do. Sarah John, Sarah, your Asian mom, John, and I'm running under the squad party. My name is Viola Tang, and I'm running for academic affairs vice president with CalSERV, Cal Students for Equal Rights and Nevada Education. Yeah. I'm Damian Anderson. I'm running with Defend Affirmative Action Party. I'm running for academic affairs vice president, and I'm telling y'all vote that in order to make an impact. Yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone, sorry for my voice. My name is Yuri Chung and I'm running to be your next Academic Affairs Vice President of the AACC with Student Action. We have two questions for the AAVP candidates. You each have one minute and 30 seconds to respond and we will let you know at the 30 minute 30 second mark. I ask that the audience please hold their applause to the end of each question or the end of the office. Just don't interrupt the candidates. Um, and I'll first read the order of response and then the question twice. So the order of response for the first question is Sarah, Viola, Yuri, Damian. Sarah, Viola, Yuri, Damian. In some respects, budget cuts will continue to be inevitable in the next year. How would you use your position to make sure they are made in a fair and transparent way and that students' interests are protected? Would this entail working with or against the administration? How would you use your position to make sure budget cuts are made in a fair and transparent way and that students' interests are protected? Would this entail working with or against the administration? Sarah, you're the master. Hi guys, I'm Sarah, your Asian mom, Zhang, and um, quite frankly, uh, I have no intention of answering this question because I'm, you know, I ran under the sort of platform that I'm disappointed in the ASUC and I wish they would try harder. Uh, and if they tried harder, maybe they could, you know, be the Associated Students of Harvard instead of the UC. Um, but uh, honestly, that sort of gimmick is really just offensive. And, um, you know, not, not all Asians have overly ambitious, passive-aggressive mothers. Um, it's just me. And, uh, and it's, it's an offensive ethnic stereotype and I shouldn't, I shouldn't perpetuate that. So instead, uh, since I can't vote for myself, since I'm offended by myself, I just wanted to come to this debate and see who I should vote for, actually. Um, except I'm kind of at an impasse because, um, honestly, you guys are all exactly the same. <laughs> uh, one of you, one of you, uh, well, actually, with the exception of the DAP candidate, you both have, can you have, both have platforms. Um, the DAP candidate says that he won't conform to what is popular or transform and conform to the status quota, but I'm not promising anything. And then uh, I will use my time next time to uh, explain why you two are exactly the same and that I can't tell the difference between you, but not in a weird and racial way. <laughs> oh, yeah. for Academic Affairs Vice President with CalSERV. So this year, due to the budget cuts, undergraduate education and graduate education has really been cut disproportionately. Classes have been cut, GSI positions have been cut, basic services that are really core to our education have been cut. And many students think that things are so bad that the ASUC, that the school, that students cannot do anything. I am here to tell you that is not true. The ASUC can do something on this campus. The Academic Affairs Vice President appoints student representatives to committees in the Academic Senate that influence decisions on what courses are offered, whether you can study abroad or not, what kind of admissions policies we have that really impact the kind of students that we have on our campus. And the Academic Vice Affairs Vice President not only appoints those students, but makes sure that they are held accountable, that we get feedback from them so that the rest of the student population knows what's going on. As your Academic Affairs Vice President, I'll make sure that we have students who know what's going on in those positions. We have students give information back to the rest of the student body via a B-Space form so that we all know what's happening and we have meeting minutes to know exactly what administrators are, administration are talking about. I also do direct outreach to communities that are affected by specific de decisions made by certain committees and so that we can hold town halls to really engage our students so that everyone knows what is going on and we can mobilize because this is not a year for the ASUC to sit back and not do anything. This is a year for us to be proactive, for us to reach out to student groups, to students and make sure that student interests are upheld on the academic level. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi everyone, my name is Yeri Chung and I'm running to be our next Academic Affairs Vice President of AACC with Student Action. I currently sit on an Academic Senate Committee of Academic Freedom and I've realized the importance of being in the discussions with administrators and faculty members. The constitutional role of the Academic Affairs Vice President is to make sure that we appoint student representatives who effectively represent students on this campus. I know what it takes to be a student representative and I will make sure that the student representative is prepared to be in these discussions and really know how to effectively represent you, the students. So how I will do this is make sure that we add a student representative. Currently we only have one student representative in these committees and we, to effectively represent the students, we need to make sure the student voice is being heard with these administrat administrators and faculty members. Not only will I add a student representative, but I will create a shadowing program so that the student representatives are prepared to go in. I was thrown into this Academic Senate Committee and I didn't know how I would effectively represent all of you here and I will make sure that this shadow program will prepare the students to really know what discussion takes on in these spaces and know how to effectively represent all of you. Finally, each of the chairs of the committees um, don't always hold regular meetings and I will make sure by working with these chairs that they hold regular <laughs> meetings so that all the students know how to represent all the students and really make sure the student voice is heard on a constant and consistent basis. Basis. Thank you. You know, um, <coughs> what is uh, really dire in these times of uh, fee hikes and budget cuts is that every year people get up and they say, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to make sure this happens, make sure that happens. But every year, your fees keep on going up. Every year you still pay more tuition. Every year, you are still facing the consequences. I'm going to tell you why. Because you know what? Like she said, I'm not going to make no promises. Because you know what? I cannot do it by myself. There needs to be a movement of students. Like on March 4th, we went out there and we protested and said, you know what? We're not with this. We're not with the fee hikes and the budgets because that's affecting so many families. That we're going to stand up and fight for our education. Because if we don't fight for our education, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> Many of you are going to find yourself without an education. Many of you are going to find yourself, your family is already is, is, is feeling a pinch. M middle, middle class families are going to be thrown out of the margin. And it's going to be open, education is going to be for upper middle class and high class. But we're going to put an end to that because the main thing in order to make a difference is that we need to have a movement. And there is a movement right now, and that's defend affirmative uh, par party action. And you need to be with that movement because guess what? You can say, I'm negotiating, do all this stuff, but negotiating ain't getting nowhere. Nowhere. We need to get out there and fight for our education. We need to get out there and move and do it and do not stop until change come about. Thank you. Or against the administration. And the only you have one minute. <coughs> okay. So um, I think the as AVP, first of all, the role is to be professional and to talk to administration. And as a current AC senator, I have done that, especially when engaging on issues affecting international students as the only elected representative. Yeah. However, when administrative interests are not in line with student interests, we need to be able to mobilize and organize students and really directly outreach to communities that will be directly affected. And so when it comes down to student interests, if it be against the administration, I am willing to take that stance because the ACC is here to represent students. The Academic Affairs Vice President needs to make sure that the student voice is represented in the Academic Senate Committees. Not only will I work with the administration, especially if the administration is the one who is shaping the campus policy here on our, the academic policy here on our campus. Not only will I work with the administration, but if the student voice is not effectively heard within the administration, I will make sure that you let me know how I can effectively represent you and make sure that in these spaces, administration has the vo ha make sure that the student voice is being heard. In these spaces, I have realized the importance of being in these discussions. And not only do I know that you have to work with them, you, I understand that they do shape the policy here on our campus and really to make sure that the student voice has an equal right as well as the administration here on our campus. Thank you. Okay. Um, the order for the second question is Damien, Viola, Sarah, Yuri. <laughs> Damien, Viola, Sarah, Yuri. One of the biggest roles of the AABP is to appoint members of advisory councils to the chamber. <coughs> How would you ensure that advisory committees are adequately seeking student input and presenting that information to the campus administration? How would you ensure that advisory committees are adequately seeking student input and presenting that information to the administration? Okay, so 
one of the first things that when I'm in office, the first thing I'm going to do is that so many people say, you know what, I know we can be fake.